Imagine living in a world where there are no telescopes, no satellites, not even calculators. Just you, the stars, and the quiet knowledge that those lights above hold the answers to life's biggest mysteries. Now picture people from over a thousand years ago, staring up at those very same stars and uncovering cosmic secrets with an accuracy that rivals modern science. How did they do it? And could they have known something that we've somehow lost today? We often think of ancient civilizations as worlds so far behind us that they couldn't possibly know what we know today. But what if that assumption is all wrong? Because ancient Indian astronomers calculated numbers that seem almost superhuman, they measured the length of a year down to mere seconds of the modern-day calculation. How could they achieve this without our technology? An ancient manuscript called the Surya Siddhanta, this text, written around 1500 years ago, seems simple enough, a manual on the movements of the planets, the sun, and the moon. But there's something extraordinary in these pages. It records the length of a year as 365.2422 days. Today, we use 365.2425 days, just 0.0003 days of difference. Let that settle for a second. The calculation was almost exact, and it's not just impressive, it's humbling. Imagine the patience, the sheer dedication it would take to observe the stars every single night, year after year, to reach that level of precision. It wasn't a simple task of jotting down numbers, it was a lifetime of devotion. These people didn't have advanced tools, they had their minds, their sight, and their commitment. Just imagine, with nothing but their observations and calculations, they had a view of the universe that took us centuries to confirm. And this isn't even the most astonishing part. Now, fast forward a few centuries, and we meet Bhaskaracharya, another brilliant mind from ancient India. He made some jaw-dropping calculations of his own. In the 12th century, Bhaskaracharya calculated the time it takes for the Earth to complete its orbit around the Sun to be 365.2588 days. Now, today's value? 365.2564 days. So he was off by just a few minutes over an entire year. Think about that. This wasn't a world where people flew planes or sailed around the globe with precision. This was a time when the simplest journey could be perilous. And yet, Bhaskaracharya's work brings us so close to modern values that it's like he was seeing through time. And here we are, with all our tech, wondering how he did it. It wasn't magic, it was knowledge. And it raises a question that we don't often ask. What did they know that we've forgotten? So how did they do this? What were their tools, their techniques? They didn't have calculators or machines. What they had were instruments called yantras, massive stone tools, some over 20 feet tall that they used to track the sun, the planets, and the stars. One of these yantras, the Samrat Yantra, is a massive sundial at Jantar Mantar. It's so precise that its shadow moves by just a single millimeter per second. This wasn't just a tool, it was a masterpiece of engineering. They knew exactly how to align it with the stars, precisely how to carve and place each piece so that it could measure time to the second. Just picture that. People so connected to the universe around them that they didn't need wires or screens. They just knew. And this knowledge, this exactness, didn't come from any single person. It was passed down and perfected over generations. Some historians even wonder if these observatories were used for more than just measuring time. Maybe they were gateways to understanding our place in the universe itself. And this isn't just a story of ancient tools, it's a glimpse into a civilization that understood their world in ways we're still trying to catch up to. Ancient Indian astronomers believed that by studying the stars, they could understand more than just planetary movements. They could tap into the very essence of existence. They felt that human beings were reflections of the cosmos itself, that everything within us mirrored the universe around us. And they weren't alone in thinking this. Modern astronauts have reported feeling a oneness when they look at Earth from space, a profound sense of connection with everything, but these ancient astronomers reached that same understanding without ever leaving the ground. It wasn't about conquering nature or controlling it, it was about becoming one with it. They saw studying the stars as a journey inward, not just outward. To them, the movement of planets wasn't just scientific data, it was a kind of language, a way for the universe to speak to us, if only we could listen. It's fascinating that these ancient astronomers didn't just stop at observing stars and planets, they went much deeper. Ancient Indian texts, including the Vedas and the Mahabharata, talk about cosmic cycles that last billions of years. Yes, billions. And these texts describe a universe that expands and contracts in endless cycles. Now scientists studying quantum physics in the Big Bang are only recently starting to talk about similar ideas, of a universe that didn't just explode into existence but instead expands and contracts over time. Carl Sagan, one of the greatest modern astrophysicists, was fascinated by these ideas. He once said that Hindu cosmology is the only one whose time scales match those of modern cosmology. In a time when most people thought the universe was just a few thousand years old, ancient Indian astronomers were envisioning vast spans of time. They called it the Yuga Cycle, a sequence of ages stretching over millions and billions of years. Can you imagine the kind of vision it would take to think on that scale without any modern technology? It wasn't just belief. They had a reason for everything. But the accomplishments of ancient Indian astronomers weren't just about theories or distant stars. They applied their knowledge practically too. They measured the Earth's diameter, predicted eclipses, 
track the paths of planets with an accuracy that makes us wonder if they knew something we still don't fully understand. Aryabhata, one of these extraordinary minds, calculated the value of pi to four decimal places, 3.1416, and he did this over a thousand years before Europe had any similar calculation. Aryabhata even realized that the Earth rotates on its axis, which causes day and night, a concept that wasn't confirmed in Europe until centuries later. With nothing but the night sky and the desire to understand it, these ancient astronomers reached truths that modern science took thousands of years to rediscover. This wasn't just luck or coincidence. They knew, and they cared enough to document and preserve it. All of these incredible observations and calculations were recorded in Sanskrit, a language of such precision that today's linguists compare it to a programming language. In fact, some computer scientists believe Sanskrit could be a bridge to AI, given its structure and clarity. When these ancient astronomers recorded their findings, it wasn't just numbers. They were encoding their understanding in a language designed to last. Every syllable held meaning as if they were speaking a language that could reach into the future. Imagine writing down your understanding of the universe in a way that someone a thousand years later could still understand, maybe even learn from. It's as if they knew they were creating a timeless language that could communicate knowledge across generations. Looking at these achievements, it's hard not to feel a sense of wonder. These astronomers didn't separate science from life or treat it as something purely technical. For them, understanding the cosmos was a way to understand themselves, their place in the world, and their connection to everything around them. They believed in a unity with nature that went beyond individual needs. And maybe, in a way, they were closer to the stars, to the universe, than we are now. This isn't just about ancient India. It's about the human desire to understand, to explore, and to connect. In today's world, we often separate knowledge and wisdom, science and spirituality, but these astronomers saw them as one. They weren't just measuring the universe, they were a part of it. If you're as fascinated by these stories as I am, hit that subscribe button. Here on Universal Insights, we're diving into the mysteries of the universe, exploring knowledge that connects us to the past, and opening doors to the future. Comment below, do you think we could ever reconnect with the stars the way these ancient astronomers did? And share this video with anyone who's ever looked up at the night sky and wondered what's out there. Because maybe, just maybe, the answers have been with us all along.